Okay. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, the meeting, this meeting of the uh, Milburn Short Hills Business Organization, Thursday, December 15th, 2022, is hereby called to order. Tracy, could you read the Sunshine Compliance Statement, please? Sure. Hi. Um, original notice of the time, day, location, and agenda of this meeting to the extent known was provided at least 48 hours prior to the commencement of this meeting in the following manner, pursuant to the provisions of NJSA 10, 4 through 6, et cetera, the Open Public Meetings Act. Notice was posted in town hall and the township's website by notification to newspapers on December 22nd, 2021 of the schedule for 2022 and by providing notice to the township clerk. Thanks, Tracy. Please stand uh, for the salute of the flag. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Can we have the roll call, please? Michael Pazavecchio. Here. Jackie Benjamin Lieberberg. Here. AC Katz Levine. Here. Jesse Mullman. Here. Andrew Morgan is not here. present. Ashley Schultz. Here. Richard Wasserman. Here. Stephen Weiner. Here. Thank you, Tracy. As we start our meetings every week, our mission statement is the purpose of a special improvement district is to promote, grow, and support local businesses, property owners, residents, and visitors. Milburn Township Civ Ordinance designates a new district management corporation whose mission is to encourage the economic, cultural, and social vitality of Milburn Township through increased marketing and visibility, improved and renewed infrastructure, and local business development engagement and engagement. Tracy, uh, we have an approval of the minutes. These are the minutes of November 10th, 2022. They are attached to your agenda packets were provided earlier. Does anybody have any changes, additions, deletions? If not, uh, can I have a motion to uh, approve those minutes of November 10th? Motion. Second? Second. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. So, well, I should have said, is everybody eligible? I think that? other Ashley was not present, so everyone other than Ashley okay. is eligible. Okay. Okay. Public comments. Uh, if you are in the building when invited to speak, please come to the lectern, clearly state your name and address, and speak into the microphone at the podium so that your comments can be understood by all and recorded. Um, if you are at home, you will also be called upon. Um, at the appropriate time. If you, if an audience or a committee member reads from a prepared statement, please provide a copy to um, Tracy Castellini at her email address. Speakers are asked to limit their comments to three minutes. Um, as I said, if you're here, you have the opportunity to speak at the podium microphone, or if you are um, joining us via Zoom, you'll also have a chance to uh, participate in the meeting. Is anybody in here? Uh, does anybody wish to speak? Good evening. Thank you, Perry Urso, 514 Melbourne Avenue in Short Hills. So the executive director has gone to great lengths to disparage me, my family, and my businesses. For what? Someone standing up for their rights? Yes, I sent an email on November 2nd, 2022, reporting an incident, which occurred on October 29th, 2022 to Mr. Grillo, the Township Administrator, Mr. McDonald, and his assistant, Mr. Mullman, all of which whom failed to respond. It wasn't until I read tonight's agenda packet on Tuesday that I discovered Mr. Grillo's prepared statement read at the November 10th SIV meeting. Mr. Grillo spent an awful um, uh, amount of time and repeatedly made defamatory statements in response to my email. That's how he chose to answer an email. Rather than to respond to my email, he further went into great detail to publicly respond to this, to my email and which he felt necessary to put on social media. However, in October, when the Wonder Truck sponsorship was questioned, he failed to provide a policy or any agreement that's been implemented. Nor had the township ever announced and disclosed the Wonder Truck restrictions and limitations. Do they actually exist? 
Why are residents receiving their coupons mailings within a restricted area? Coincidentally, right here. But I don't want to take away from my time. Um, this is not only unprofessional, but ruthless behavior with absolutely no boundaries. Mr. Grillo is intentionally trying to ruin my business at any cost and smear my, smear my reputation. What is more outrageous is that this body and the TC condone this type of behavior. Watch the meeting from November 10th. Mr. Molman is well aware that I was not able, that not only was I let out of the meeting, but I was not let back into the meeting on November 10th. Vicki was kind enough to try to navigate, but, and I've sent Mr. Molman multiple emails stating that I was never, um, uh, let back in. Today, um, today's day and age, this is unacceptable. Mr. Molman should be held accountable for assuming that I actually was on. Ms. Lieberberg and Mr. Wasserman's ordinance 2561-20 leave disenfranchised property owners' hands tied. And this board debilitates the public from responding to reports because of how your public comment sections are structured. What this body, your executive director, township committee, and attorney should be providing to the public is with an opinion of the validity of this expanded appointed entity, along with an updated conflict of interest memorandum. Purely this is entity has displayed nothing other than taxation without representation. I have a few questions if you'd allow me. Why Mr. Wasserman and Mr. Molman not, why have they not included in their reports regarding, regarding the change of garbage services to commercial properties and their merchants? How is the change determined? And which properties are deemed exempt? And how are these, uh, how are these businesses uh, who have not been required to go to boards factored into the change? And as a note, Mr. Wasserman and I believe Ms. Lieberberg advocated for a more laxed in zoning cr um, criteria. Which brings me to my next question. Ms. Hurst, what, can I just ask if you could just- I have one other ground. question, Mr. Holbeck, if you don't mind. Okay, uh, which brings me to my next question. What zoning requirements were followed for this entity's temporary events held at available vacant properties? Or is this entity also exempt from following the rules of law? And if I could just on another note, you have maybe three to five people that come and actually speak. We are all busy. I came from my business. You can't even extend a courtesy, let people finish reading a prepared statement. I think I am letting you. I'm yes, you are. But you know, Mr. Wiener constantly is, you know, telling us that when he's replacing you that, you know, your time is up, your time, you're constantly interrupting. I just think that because you don't have that many participants, which they should be waking up. Okay. If you, thank you, Mr. Sergio. Thank Zerzo. you, safe going home. Thank you. If yes, you have, yes, I will. If you have those in writing, if you can submit them. Tell we'll you, because Tracy knows I always send it. Perfect, thank you. Thank you. Um, good evening, my name is Jeffrey Feld, 11 hours in the lane. First, happy holidays for everyone who are gonna be celebrating, whether it's Kwanzaa, Christmas, or Hanukkah in the next few weeks, everyone, good holidays. Um, it's very important about public comments. Public comments is this residents' ability of having checks and balances. And I've been saying for, I think the last three or four meetings that I was asking you to revisit your policy on that because the reports, comments come before the reports and we don't have an opportunity to respond to statements that are made in the reports. Uh, we have to wait to the next meeting. And I, you know, when you compare other public entities, the way they're structured, reports come before public comments. Again, because that's a check and balance to prevent waste, fraud, and abuse of powers. As to the agenda, there should be, I believe, you know, when we have, comments from the, regarding from the administration or township committee, there should be some discussion about the change in the uh, garbage policy. So that will affect all the businesses and might affect their ability to pay this additional garbage removal fee or the city assessment. I don't know, I mean, the notices were mailed out on December, I think 2nd, it was posted on December 6th, only 60 days for businesses do it, it's pretty hard during the Christmas period of time. And you know, what, and the real question is, when did the people, the TC know they were gonna change this policy? Why did they only give 60 day notice? I don't know the answer, um, but that's something that we need to find out. Um, the Taylor Park, no discussion about the Taylor Park. You know, every meeting has been talked about the Taylor Park um, Garden Gateway project. You know, there was a discussion that after the last meeting, it came in the cost about $1.8 million. 
and it basically blew it up. Um, there's questions about the December 2nd to 4th Main Street closure that you did for your holiday event. No, was that approved by the council? I don't know. I don't, I've been town council meetings. I don't know that. Um, at the last township committee meeting, which was dysfunctional and snarky, Mr. Wasserman made comments about the downtown vision plan in which I've been asserting that the city is a predicate for the Main Street New Jersey program. It's tied into the downtown vision plan. And this is all coming together. And we have the litigation. We're, we're all waiting for the judge to enter, have a hearing. As to the actual agenda tonight, there's certain questions I have, and I'm just trying to give it to you if you give me some time. As to the budget, you have a line item putting in for grant money so that you're going to be received next year. I think that's improper because the revenues won't be received till next year and they should really be in the budget for 2023 rather than uh, in the column, including as revenues because they're, they're, they're not going to receive. That's a municipal law of financial kind of question. As to the, this is where I really need a couple of minutes to talk about the Black River. I, I, I don't want to give you a couple of minutes. You have a minute. minute right? The Black River proposed contract. Question of what is the effective date? There's two different dates. There's a date saying it's effective at the top, and then it says effective when it's signed. Also, why is venue for any litigation in Union County rather than Essex County? The you know, contract is signed, you're, you're located here. I don't understand why it's in Union County. There's also a question is whether I may suggest that you postpone okay. approve this contract till the next meeting, because you'll be able to have two factors. One, you'll know if the budget is approved, because next Tuesday, the township committee is going to be considering the approval of the budget. I don't know if that's a done deal, but right now you don't have the funding for this contract. In addition, there may should be a representation um, about the litigation, that the validity of this entity is still subject to dispute. And it's sort of interesting that the people who are asked- I'm just going to ask you to wrap up. One thing, the people, the people who are asked to sign the contract is the yeah. chairperson and the attorney. That, that's. We're going to get into that. All right, but I just raised that. That was a proposed contract, so that, that's. I'm just raising the issue again. Sure. Everyone, happy holidays. Thank you. Thank you. Vicki Powell, 358C Milburn Avenue. I want to start with saying how great the igloos and on Main Street were with the s'mores. I heard from so many customers, customers that have lived in this town who come and patronize, but they don't really participate in events. They were actually calling me on the phone. What's going on in town? I want to bring the grandkids. I had people come in the store. We just did s'mores on Main Street. Home run, hit out of the park. Great. I hope next year we do it a little bit more uh, spread out, get some more igloos. I thought it was fabulous. Too bad the weather didn't cooperate fully for the next weekend for up at uh, Chatham Road, but it was great. It was a great event. Well done. Congratulations. Um, I also noticed on the agenda that we're going to do some more uh, workshops, maybe potentially with Union County EDC, I think that's what it's called. I think that's wonderful that you're going to be doing something like that, but I also think you're missing the boat, and I think we need another kind of um, group to come in and teach us other things, not financial things, but social media. This is a key component to any business. I'm very active on social media. My business is very active on social media, but I need to learn more. There's more aspects. There's TikTok. What do we do for our website for SEO? I think you're, you know, the financial aspect or in, and the leadership um, meetings are great, but I think you need to do other things. Another company that is a little bit more with social media, because I think that's very important. Um, uh, next year, continue with the social media that we're doing with the, the SIDS doing now more um, original content, very important. And um, looking forward to the Girls' Night Out event for next year. I hope we get the committee to start planning in January so we can make it a bang knockout out of the park. And um, everyone have a happy holiday. You're all doing great. Steve, Amanda, as always, you're doing fabulous. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody online? Hi, good evening, Jean Pasternak, 342 Hobart Avenue. I have just three things I wanted to ask about. Um, the first one is I noticed in Summit, they did a survey about the closure of, I think it's Maple Street, that they closed down similar to um, what we do with Maine. 
Uh, they they conducted a survey of the community, both residents, businesses, et cetera. I, I think people were sort of complaining about the fact that it didn't get to everyone, but in the end, they were glad that there was something conducted because it really affects the entire community when that road is shut down. Uh, has anything been considered like that um, regarding our main street? Would you be willing to consider doing a survey and just taking the temperature of the community to see what people really feel about it? Good and bad, I mean, there's good on every decision, there's positives and negatives, but I think it would be good to be, um, give the community a chance to weigh in and give you feedback as to whether they feel um, this is benefiting the whole community. Uh, this, the second um, item that I have raised in the past, but i never got an answer. I'm just wondering if, is there any um, effort by the board to look at the return on the investment of both the taxpayers and the merchants in the SID? What, what is the bottom line return? Not just the qualitative things, which obviously, you know, we hear a lot about, we hear about vacancy rates, but what about the actual income to the community, to the, the township of Milburn? Have the tax rolls, you know, seen a significant increase as a result of business um, activity increase? And what, what is that? What, how does it measure from year to year since the SID has been in place? Um, the third thing I wanted to comment on is uh, as a, as a, both a friend and um, a resident of town, uh, the manner in which um, Steve Grillo addresses and deals with problems that, that are happening with uh, the Ursos and their business is, is extremely unprofessional. I, I have to agree with that. I really feel uncomfortable listening to it. I think there are much better ways of handling um, issues, thorny issues. I wonder how many times he's actually taken the effort to go and meet with them or um, enter the business and talk to them about their concerns rather than just use social media and this meeting to bash. I, I just don't think it's appropriate and I think it needs to stop. It's, it's not a good thing for our community. Thank you very much. Have a good holiday, everyone. Uh, moving along, Chairman's remarks, let's make it. Okay, we have uh, some departures and some potential uh, uh, people coming in. So we just wanted to start by uh, recognizing that uh, both Jamana Culligan and Andrew Morgan will be um, coming off the board. Uh, Jumana's already come off the board, but Andrew will be leaving uh, as his term ends December 31st this year, and Jumana uh, resigned last month. Their appointments, and we'll do this for the record so that the public knows, their, their seats need to be filled and can have to be done by appointment of the township committee. Uh, we, the board, are <clears throat> encouraged to make recommendations, but we don't have the authority to appoint our own board members. Um, the governing body can take into consideration our recommendations, but they're non-binding recommendations. They're under no obligation to uh, accept those. So I wanted to thank uh, Jumana and Andrew for being initial members, charter members, if you will, of this uh, board of trustees. Um, had the two of them, incredible business acumen, um, incredible energy, great ideas, and were just really very nice, dedicated people, just good individuals. So um, we have, and uh, we, we do have um, plaques for them. And the day we can well. And the day as well. Uh, we did not have a plaque at the time, but I, we get a little better every month. So now we have uh, three plaques for our uh, three family members who are not gonna be with us in 2023. Um, so thank them. If anybody wanted to make any comments about them, feel free. Uh, I think you know their, their actions and their work and their dedication really speaks for itself. I just want to say that uh, I, I, I think uh, Richard and I uh, would certainly uh, share your, um, your uh, enthusiasm and respect and contributions for all of them. And we are grateful. Um, everyone brought a little bit of a different lens to the, uh, to the group and uh, we are very grateful for your contribution. So 
thank you from the bottom of my heart. Yes, and I also want to thank uh, I want to thank Nitesh and Jamama and Andrew. Uh, they really uh, they were really critical to the formation of this group because uh, what uh, what Jackie and I don't mention is that before you know before uh, Explore was started, there were there were meetings. There were uh, there were a lot of there was a groundswell. Uh, there, there was a groundswell of support for merchants to. Um, you know, to, to have explore and to have another entity, and um, and that goes sometimes on set. And so we owe them a debt of gratitude for all of their work and their their initial work too, and their leadership. Yeah, for sure. I just want to add my thanks. Yeah, and I'm glad we're including Nadej and Jumana and Andrew. Certainly, just as um, members of the business community. They brought the really, really important perspective to keep us focused on our mission, core mission. Um, I especially, you know, valued the opportunity to work with Jumana as co-chairs of the marketing committee. And I mean, she will have also have made her mark because she and Deanna, who works with her, you know, really developed our branding, um, our logo, our look and feel. So that was an especially um important element and you know for me it was very impactful i'm trying to remember i think it was a couple of meetings ago you know andrew had reflected upon um you know that one of the reasons he had joined the board was because some past you know efforts had not you know really achieved everything that was hoped and he really wanted to make sure to to keep an eye and have a perspective of the business community and i think it was especially after hurricane ida um, you know, that he said, wow, like he was so thankful that this organization existed. And I think that really said a lot. So yeah, it was great having all three of them involved. And each of them volunteered for this board while running businesses to town, which is uh, an even greater testament to what their dedication was. But we must move along, so we need to replace them, and we're lucky that we have a community. Uh, but, right, right. Today is today, but tomorrow is uh, yet to come. So we have two spots to fill, uh, and we have distinct membership um, criteria. So Jamana represented one of two tenant spots uh, seats on our board, and she has one year remaining on that appointment because. She was coming off before the expiration of her term. So we are proposing the name of Lex Clark, who is uh, the co-owner of Taste Buddy, located at 515A Milton Avenue. Bless you. Uh, Lex has really gotten involved, although it's a fairly new business, she's really gotten involved in the community and become a, a leader in the business community since they opened uh, late last year. She's participated in numerous um, events that Explore has done and brings another representative from Upper Milburn Avenue uh, to our board. So uh, we will be sending, proposing the name of Lex Clark to fill the tenancy. It's the unexpired term, so that will end next year. Um, it won't be a full term yet. Second, uh, Andrew represented one of our two owner seats. And since his term expired, there will be a three-year uh, term on the new appointment. We'd like to propose the name of Yell uh, Klatt, who is the co-owner of the building at 12 Home Street. You might recall that address as being the home for our uh, Explore Here for the Holidays event in early November. Um, Yell has been philanthropically driven um, and has really donated that space for a number of local groups, including uh, the Chamber of Commerce and Milburn Chess. So we'll be proposing uh, Yell Klatt's name uh, for a full three-year term as an owner seat. Um, if there's anybody who wants to discuss these individuals, um, again, these are recommendations this board will make to the TC, and uh, hopefully they uh, accept our recommendations. Happy to entertain any discussion, comments, questions. Well, I was, I was, I for one was very happy um, that the. 12 homes uh, location was uh, was made available for some community service and um, and I, I just think that was great and I just think that was wonderful and we need more we need more uh, we need more landlords or, uh, or you know we need more people like that to come forward to, to help us in our mission. 
Well, we're lucky we don't have too much vacant space. <laughs> no, so no, there's, no, not, there's fewer opportunities, for that, but right, we're, we're happy. Right. We were we were very very fortunate yeah. to have that yeah. opportunity as for others. Yeah. So, if no other questions, Steve, I don't know if you want to add anything, but those will be those names will be presented to our township committee for consideration. Uh, that's that's great. Um, we did interview a, quite a bit of folks for both positions. Um, obviously, being on a volunteer board, there is a time commitment uh, that some folks didn't feel comfortable making. Um, but uh, we do have some really great support out there for folks, um, including those who have joined our advisory committee. Um, that is the sub board. Um, and those folks, uh, we're actually going to be expanding that next year as well. You see that on your January agenda. But um, if nobody has any objections or comments, um, I'd like your authorization to provide these two names to the clerk so that it can be on the reorganization uh, meeting agenda. Anybody have any uh, objections to that? Okay. I think we've got authorization. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you, Steve. Uh, and I know uh, to Steve's point, um, people were not banging down his door. Although we have plenty of people willing to volunteer and do a lot of good things, it is a commitment. So it is a time commitment. And when you're running businesses, I don't have to tell many of you. Um, this is, uh, you know, not, not exactly how you may want to spend your free Thursday night. So, uh, Township Committee Report, Richard Possible. Yeah, thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Uh, so I wanted to talk about the parking deck signage. Uh, as of today, we've completed the majority of the installation of the parking deck signage program. Thus far, eight of the 10 older version parking lot signs have been replaced in the entrance sign banner has been installed on the deck itself. And it's really nice. If everybody wants to take a look at the screen, uh, that's a sign. And uh, this is, you know, again, this is something that we've been thinking, of, the township has been thinking about for many years. Uh, due to the inclement weather, the rest of the project has been delayed to early next week. The vendor will install two pedestrian way, wayfinding signs at Milburn Art Gallery and a blade sign at the corner of Essex and Lackawanna. I'm very happy that the town was able to work in partnership with Explore to move this project forward. Our deck has been underutilized for a number of years and we're implementing various strategies, including expanding shopper parking spaces to increase use. The signage program is critical is a critical component of increasing downtown shopping by making parking easier and a perfect example of why the city is so vital. In 2021, we commissioned a curb efficiency study, which resulted in nearly 20 new parking spaces on Essex Street and Toll Hall, Toll Hall Plaza, the creation of the Milburn Art Gallery as a destination to draw pedestrians between Milburn Avenue and Essex Street, and now this project. Special thanks to Alex McDonald, our town administrator, for his partnership on this project. Again, having a SID like this, uh, makes these projects uh, doable and obtainable. And, uh, and, and Steve, just want to give you a special thanks for, for making it happen. Uh, as many people know, my term on the township committee is ending. <laughs> and I just said to Steve, Steve, got to get the signs done <laughs> by the time my term ends. I, I, promise, I promise my constituents we'd have those signs yeah. up. So a yeah, special thank you to get that done. I also wanted to want to say uh, just to just to want to thank all of our volunteers here uh, from on behalf of the township. You know, people don't. You know, we just want to take a second that our volunteers are incredible. We, we're doing such great work, um, and this has come up before. I mean, the vacancy rate has gone down, which everybody knows, uh, approximately sixteen percent to approximately five percent. I mean, tremendous work, and all of the engagement, especially uh, during the summer months. The holiday months, having having a place for our residents to go to engage with each other, it's just critical to our mission. And I just want to thank everybody here uh, for for doing their part and spending so much time on their volunteer work. We really, I'm really in awe of it. So, uh, so just special thank you. Um, and um, is there any, and also special thanks to Nadej, Jumana, and Andrew, as that was mentioned. Thank you so much for, for helping us get started. So, okay, I'm done. And if I can, Richard, thank you for your service on the Township Committee. Thank you. Thank you. And yes, your continued service here. So, yeah. but thank you for that. That's, thank you. That's God's work, as I like to say. <laughs> 
business administrator's report, Jesse. I have no reports this evening. You after school. <laughs> uh, treasurer's report, Stephen. I have not. No, I have. <laughs> um, sure. So, as included in the materials for the, this evening's meeting, as of December 1, uh, our account balance in the bank was $44,724. And uh, just wanted to highlight on this, on, on the financials, that the special assessment for the year, very proud. There's a $1,000 spread between the tax and what was actually brought in. And I mean, that's terrific. So $203,000 instead of $204,000. Wow. So only $1,000. Yes. Yes. So I think that's terrific. And um, just generally, everything's looking good for year end. We'll be carrying over some funds. So um, everything's on target uh, as we approach year end. So. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, next, we have our marketing and events report from Amanda. Amanda, before you're able to get started, I have to say something. We, we always give Steve accolades and Adam on the back <laughs> and all these things. But uh, uh, listen, Amanda was hauling lumber and, and <laughs> firewood and had these special things. She had me tending fires and breaking up graham crackers and doing all kinds of stuff. But uh, Amanda, your efforts were exceptional. Uh, over these, uh, you know, what I witnessed just last weekend was really, uh, you know, on a Saturday, a beautiful, cold December Saturday uh, <laughs> afternoon. And, and there were others of us there, but I just wanted to take the time to uh, acknowledge Amanda's really Herculean oh, okay. efforts. Oh, yeah. Um, and the prior yeah. weekend, too. She did yeah. Saturday and Sunday. Yes. Rainy. Mm -hmm. I learned how to build a fire from Amanda. <laughs> Honestly, the technique. Amanda had a technique, the, technique for sure. Right. And, uh, and this is above and beyond the other things that we see, you know, uh, where our talents are on display with the, with the marketing and, and the other things that she gets paid to do. This, to me, just wrung out something extra and uh, extra effort and extra dedication. So thank you, Amanda. Thank you. Okay. Um, uh, we have a video to show you that kind of does an overview of the last few weeks. I just want to jump in for a second. The gingerbread house you're going to see here was hand designed and painted by Amanda. Um, so she bought the base from the vendor and then everything else she did by hand. It's remarkable. <laughs> okay, you want to hit play? I really appreciate um, all the board members that could come out and help um, at both events. It made a difference. Uh, we had over a thousand people come through uh, the weekend of December 3rd and 4th in downtown Milburn, even with the rain on that Saturday. Um, it was actually amusing that we had to take, can you hear me? Yes. 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 Oh. yes. Um, that we had to take four different uh, trips to shop right that Sunday to get more s'mores ingredients. So it was pretty incredible. And uh, and then this past weekend um, with Tracy helping out and 
uh, Michael. Um, it's it was great to have you guys involved and just see things happening and seeing what we noticed too was families were choosing this as a meetup spot to come and hang out, make s'mores, catch up, let their kids play. Um, so it was lovely. Boxcar was wonderful to work with, and as always, DPW is just incredible um, with helping us with these things. So um, we're really excited about how everything went and looking forward to uh, what we will do next year. Um, we had about about 300 to 400 people on that sa Saturday in Short Hill Station. And then due to the weather, we uh, opted to call it for Sunday, which I think was the right move. The weather just got worse and worse. Um, but I think it proved that people like this type of event and really glad to hear from Vicki that, you know, people are coming into the stores. We were noticing uh, people walking around in Short Hill Station with Brooklyn pizza boxes. You know, we're seeing people with pizza in downtown, um, drinking coffee, you know, the, that kind of thing. And even with Taste Buddy helping out um, selling hot chocolate, they did very well at Short Hill Station. So I just see more and more opportunities for the future uh, to enhance these these programs. Um, I think the only other thing that I have to say at this time is our next um, uh, event, if you'll call it an event, uh, would be this Saturday. We're having our holiday character day from 12 o'clock to 3 o'clock p.m. throughout all five districts. We're going to have um, the Grinch, Buddy the Elf, Elsa, and Olaf from Frozen. And uh, we could use one more uh, volunteer to help escort one of the characters around an area of town. So if, if you all could think about it, take a look at your calendars and get uh, in touch with Steve or myself, we'd love to, to have some ad additional help there. But other than that, um, everything is going smoothly for the end of the year. Does anyone have any questions? No, no questions, Amanda. You left us all speechless. <laughs> great, great work. Thank you. Happy holidays, everyone. Okay, Executive Director Report, Steve. Thank you, Chairman. A um, couple of items that I just wanted to bring everybody up to speed on. I recently met with the project manager from Garden Homes. That's the metropolitan that's being built on Upper Milburn Avenue on the Springfield side of the border. Um, obviously, it's a project that's going to... Uh, impact the town, hopefully in a very positive way. I think we've already seen that from how many businesses are now occupied on that corridor. Um, but they are, I, I met with them to try to match their streetscaping with any work that we may do. So um, they're gonna give me the specs, for instance, for their plantings, so that the plantings that we do on Upper Milburn will be identical. Um, they also are gonna be putting in benches and garbage cans. Um, and they agreed to donate uh, five benches and three garbage cans to the Milburn side, um, really just out of my request. And so uh, they're going to be doubling their order uh, when they put it in. So that's going to be five benches and three garbage cans um, at no cost to the city or the merchants. So um, sometimes all you have to do is ask. And all to go on Upper Milburn? It'll all be on Upper Milburn. Yep, it'll be spaced out basically between Glenwood and Short Hills Avenue. Um, and that'll be in the springtime when they actually order that equipment. We also received a small grant from Citizens Bank Foundation. Uh, that is for our MWBE program. That's the Minority Women Business, uh, Minority Women uh, Business Entrepreneurs. Uh, we also have um, an immigrant component to this as well. Um, and the original request was for ten thousand dollars to do a fairly robust um, business support program for those specific folks. Um, obviously, we only received ten percent of that ask, and so uh, I'm currently speaking with. Citizens Bank on restructuring the grant, obviously scaling it down. Uh, but at this point, we're looking at, and I've had meetings with the Union County EDC um, to do financial literacy and business growth training. Uh, one of the, the key issues that um, minority businesses, women-owned businesses, immigrant businesses face is typically, um, we call it barriers to entry, right? Um, getting traditional loans or uh, not having command of the English language and all things that um, through training and through access uh, we can hopefully help them as entrepreneurs. So um, that's going to be a small piece of what we do next year in terms of the business advocacy budget. Um, as uh, as Vicky mentioned, we will be hopefully hiring a social media consultant to uh, host classes um, to help businesses get uh, 
even more up to date with uh, the different social media options, which certainly change by the week. Um, and then the potential gift card program that we talked about at our November meeting. I've had subsequent meetings with the business advocates, um, with our uh, advisory committee, as well as some of the board members on how we can structure that. And I hope to come to you in January with a final plan. So uh, if memory serves, I think we have about $14,000 allocated next year for those types of business services. Uh, and I think we can offer quite a bit uh, of training classes for folks. So um, that's the $1,000 grant we did receive. Uh, also a grant from Essex County uh, for $7,844. Uh, we requested 10. So that time we got 78%. So that's pretty good. Um, that money is going to go to our public art program in 2023. And so that is a, a partial reimbursement grant. They're going to give us 75% uh, in cash up front and then the remaining 25. Um, and that is, uh, that is going to go to cover some staffing costs um, that we will incur through Amanda's work as she oversees the program and uh, to cover stipends and installations. So um, we, we've obviously shown you guys quite a number of public art uh, options that we've collected over the last couple of months. And so this money uh, plus the clean communities money that we have from the town plus our own budget, uh, we're looking at probably between 20 and $25,000 that we're gonna be able to invest in public art, which uh, I think is, is a really remarkable number given you know that we didn't have that in the budget just a couple of years ago. There was no budget for public art. Um, so very happy that Essex County was able to provide us with that. Um, and then with that, I'm going to do our 2020 year end report. Here. 2022. 2022, did I say yeah. 2020? Yes, you did. Oh my goodness. Thank you, Jesse. So uh, every December, I have the privilege to present to this board, the governing body, as well as the public at large, our annual report. Uh, the final meeting is a perfect time both to look back at the experience and lessons of the previous 12 months and the ambitions and goals for the next 12. So I'm very pleased with the successes we've had for 2022 and excited for the opportunities in 2023. Jesse, if you go to the third slide here. Thank you. Uh, so to borrow from our chairman's message, uh, Explore has helped drive our return to normalcy and reassert Milburn Short Hills as the go-to destination for shopping, dining, recreation, and fun. Explore has succeeded by developing opportunities for our many businesses, creating experiences for our residents, and attracting visitors from across the region. And I would be remiss uh, not to offer specific thanks to you as the board of directors, our advisory committee members, and many of the volunteers and supporters who all year have helped guide our mission. We really couldn't do it without hundreds of people um, that, that all provide support. So if we go to the fifth slide in our organizational overview, as you all know, we are a 501c3 nonprofit special improvement district. We represent approximately 500 businesses in five distinct districts. And by leveraging our staff, our board of directors, advisory committee and volunteers, we strive to encourage the economic, cultural and social vitality of Milburn. We have four core strategies that guide our work, streetscaping and placemaking, events, music and marketing, business assistance and operations and governance. Each of these strategies is further expanded into specific programs and services to help reach our organizational goals. So 2020 year, uh, 2022 was a year of growth and progress. Uh, this year we collected our special assessment for the first time and we had both an executive director and a marketing director in place for the majority of the year. Um, we welcomed 49 new businesses to town, 49, hosted or supported 20 significant events, 36 musical performances, and 21 open streets events in the Main Street Pedestrian Mall. Uh, those were all business-oriented events such as Cycle Bar doing a class outdoors. Uh, we also maintained 34 new planters, which was a, a significant expansion, maintained 50 tree pits for the first time, and ended the year with a commercial vacancy rate of just 5%. And there are many new projects that are slated to come online early in 2023. The SID also continues to grow in terms of business diversity. We welcomed a new art gallery, uh, various new food establishments, multiple new ethnic stores, which reflect the inclusivity of our town, a wildly successful MMA studio, and an indoor farm. We also spent, if you go to the next slide, Jesse, we also spent a significant time and effort in transformative projects related to streetscaping and placemaking. Most prominent of these was the Milburn Art Alley with new murals, tree planters, a bocce court, selfie box, giant chessboard, bistro style seating, and overhead lighting. We also power washed Upper Milburn Avenue and led a district-wide community cleanup for founding day. 
We installed a community piano, did a fence weaving project on Upper Melbourne Avenue, and installed fall decor throughout the districts. We're also in the process of leading the first round of murals that I mentioned in our public art. And we do hope to have one mural installed by the end of the year in Short Hill Station. And having Amanda on board for nearly the entire year meant that we finally had the organizational bandwidth not only to support and market local business events, but also create ones of our own in a meaningful way. We organized and hosted multiple mixers and shopping special events, including the downtown shop stroll and saver event, founding day with Jackie and her team at CETA, Girls' Night Out, the Upper Milburn Avenue Car Show, the Uffizi Motive Fashion Show on Upper Milburn, and the Here for the Holidays Showcase. We recently com completed, as Amanda mentioned, a significant portfolio of holiday events with igloos and fire pits and soon costumed characters. And on the digital marketing side, we expanded our social media quality and followers. We're up to now over 2,900 followers. I think when I started, we were at 500. Um, so we've, we've really grown in, in that. Um, we also have upgraded our website to include a now hiring page, an available properties page, and a business resources page, as well as a reorganized and updated business directory. In terms of business assistance, as we continue to make our way back from the challenges of the pandemic and confront new ones related to inflation, Explore is committed to providing business education to our constituents. We reissued our hurricane preparedness document that's close to the heart of of our committee member, Mr. Wasserman, um, as well as a new version of the Business Success Kit. We've developed commercials for restaurants on Essex Street and Main Street and installed the signage on the parking deck that, that Mr. Wasserman just mentioned. We also hosted two classes with the Union County EDC, as well as a four-part class with Focal Point Consulting on revenue generation, succession planning, technology, and access to capital. As a publicly funded organization and a 501c3 nonprofit, we must maintain strong governance procedures to ensure compliance and promote organizations, the organization's financial and reputation growth. In 2022, we passed our first audit, secured the $1,000 grant and the $7,800 grants I just mentioned. And we also raised over $18,000 in sponsorship for events and services. Uh, finally, Milburn was named one of the 12 best small towns in New Jersey by Travel and Leisure Magazine, and we received Downtown New Jersey's Best in Place Making Award for our Main Street Pedestrian Mall. In addition, oh, there's a bunch of photos, so go through that, Jesse. We've got uh, a lot of smiling faces here uh, of all the different things that have happened uh, throughout the year. That's our Here for the Holidays event. And then, of course, uh, the last couple of weekends in the winter villages. So um, in addition to our four core strategies, we look forward to advancing some new concepts in 2023. Among these are playing an active role in real estate assistance, increasing business education, continuing to evolve our events portfolio, enhancing business social media access, and dedicating resources to employment opportunities. Uh, well, and we go to the next slide. And so while Milburn Short Hills is, is certainly on an upward economic trajectory, there are a handful of issues that still need to be addressed. Uh, businesses need to modernize their technology and online presence. Uh, stranded asset properties need to be addressed. And a modern and critical lens should be put on some of the zoning regulations which hamper economic development in this town. And finally, Explore will take the lead on presenting some common sense solutions in order to increase economic viability with the town. These include beautification efforts, such as replacing old brick sidewalks, installing new benches or holiday decorations. We've actually done quite a bit of new holiday decor this year, recommending policy changes to address real world zoning issues and promoting new and innovative concepts such as a fitness market to replace our farmer's market. And then finally, um, as you'll notice, as we go through, there's lots of smiling business owners, community members, and visitors. And uh, that is by design uh, to show how many people from this town and the surrounding area have come to believe that Milburn has a very bright future. Uh, it's my pleasure and Amanda's pleasure to serve this board and this community. And we truly thank you for your support, your guidance, and most importantly, your volunteerism. Um, you guys turn out all the time to help us, and we truly appreciate it. So thank you for everything you've done in 2022, and we look forward to next year. Thank you, Steve. Thank you for all your continued efforts. Thank you. Um, cheerleading, energy, everything. <laughs> and, and substance. It's not just all, uh, you know, it's not just all fluff. It's a, lot, a lot of substance behind that. So thank you. Thank you.
No, you're a good cheerleader, but you're also a good content person. So yes, I appreciate it. I think it's a, it's a rare mix. Okay, we have potential action items. You want to go through these? We have a meeting schedule proposed for next year. Yes, uh, thank you, Chairman. So, uh, attachment six is uh, just a, a chart in your in your packets here. Um, I am proposing essentially the same meeting schedule that we had this year, um, January through June, July and August off, and then September through December, uh, all Thursday meetings at 6.30 with the exception of our September meeting, which is gonna be moved up two days due to Rosh Hashanah. And then um, our meeting in October starting at 5.30 instead of 6.30, as that is our annual meeting and tends to be quite a long one. So. Uh, other than that, it is um, generally the third Thursday of the month, depending on how the calendar falls, um, at 6.30 p.m. with those two exceptions. Do you have any questions or comments? I thought the schedule with the uh, elimination of the two summer meetings worked out fine. I don't think we lost anything during those two summer months. Any motion to... Uh, Let's do that. Do we want to? Uh, yes. Can motion? Okay. Can we have a so a motion when uh, you're ready for adoption of the uh, schedule for 2020? Yeah. And, and unless there's any questions, can I have a motion to adopt the 2023 meeting schedule that's uh, just been presented as attachment six? Motion. Motion. Do we have second. Second. Okay. Tracy, can you call the roll? Yeah, Michael Parlevecchio. Yes. Tracy Castledean, yes. Andrew's not here. Ashley Schultz, yes. Richard Wasserman, yes. Stephen Weiner, yes. Thank you. I will publish that appropriately. Then we have a 2023 contract for Blackwood Design Company, which is the uh, which is Amanda's business. I know you have some procedural questions, but um, there's a couple of content items I'd like to discuss. Okay, so um, just if, if you focus on section two compensation, this is really um, the only uh, substantial change. So Amanda's rate, uh, she has requested an increase from $28 an hour to $33 an hour, uh, but due to an increase in the budget line, which we presented back in September and October, um, we're also able to give her an additional five hours a week. So uh, she's going from $28 an hour for 20 hours to $33 an hour for 25 hours. So um, right now she has 20 hours for Explore and then eight hours for Clean Communities related to public art. So she works 28 hours a week. Um, she's gonna now work 25 and six for Clean Communities. There's a slight, uh, because the rate goes up, the hours go down for Clean Communities but she's gonna go from a total of 28 hours a week to now 31 hours a week. So we are getting three more hours a week uh, from Amanda. So um, I think that works out for everybody. We get more of her talent and she gets paid, um, I think a very appropriate amount. Yeah, and, and just to, uh, before we get into the nuts and bolts of this, just uh, she is a consultant or a consulting company. She does maintain her own insurance. So, Correct. And I and I just want to add, you know, we we talked about our accolades before, but um, we are getting our money's worth uh, in space. She works so hard, and she's all over, and she's also all over the place. You know, whenever I'm in town doing things, somehow I always catch her in the corner <laughs> of my eye, working, building, doing, and um, and I think her rate is uh, is very is very very fair. Uh, if, you know, considering uh, everything, and I, I really, I, I just hope she stays with us a long time. And just one other point, um, this position does not include, and I'll read verbatim, holiday, vacation, or sick leave, retirement benefits, health benefits, or insurance, uh, as she is a consultant and not an employee. I just want to say ditto on just that for these number of hours, it's really amazing how much work she produces and does yeah. for us and for them. For the businesses of our 
Yeah, no, I totally agree. Substantively, she's awesome and a gem, and we have to worth every penny. So um, thank you. And um, I saw her in action, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> it's like unbelievable. Um, I do have a few like technical or, or questions of the form of agreement that's in here. Um, so, you know, we can clean it up a bit. I, you know, for example, the, the party, Ryan, I had a question about like, Amanda has a company but I see Amanda signing almost in, in a, she's not the party her company should be. So like in the second paragraph, uh, you know, I have some questions on sure. uh, that are non-substantive, but just sort of technical like that. So I don't know if we need to go through those here or if we go through and just maybe approve the form. Sure. The so substantive form. yeah, and um, I'll, I'll preface uh, that with saying, um, I'll go back and check because I may, Minimal. In fact, I think the only change that um, was made was to the hours and um, uh, rate. So, uh, so a lot of this is legacy from the original contract for last year. Um, and I'll go back and compare the two. But in terms of uh, changes, I, I have no problems if the uh, board wants to approve the form of contract, okay. then those things okay. can be changed. Right. Yeah. So, so and I think another thing, Steve, and I were talking about, I don't think you need to sign it. You can witness it. But as long as uh, maybe two, we'll have two board myself and uh, again, I'm, I'm more than happy to make that change. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. it's, it's, it's a legacy. reason you want to be on there. So. But again, I, I, I uh, you know, it worked for us last year, so I kept. No, 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 I got it. And, and again, these are these are technical changes. So uh, the substance of it, and more importantly, the substance of what the amendment provides is uh, exemplary. So. It, um, so I think it would be appropriate, unless anybody else has any questions or comments before I So I motion to approve uh, in, in principal terms, the 2023 contract for Black River Design Company. Again, that is the company through which Amanda Dean uh, 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 works with this board. Uh, so I'd like to have a motion to approve that in substance. Again, we will do some cleanup work before before we get this signed. Can I have a motion? Motion. Okay. Richard second. second. Richard. Second. Okay, I was going to second. All right. We have a motion and a second. Can we have a roll call, please? Michael Parlevecchio? Yes. Tracy Cassidine? Yes. Ashley Schultz? Yes. Richard Wasserman? Yes. Stephen Weiner? Yes. Steve engaged in what we like to call as agenda management today, <laughs> 7 30. Um, does anybody have any before I call for a motion to adjourn? Any comments or anything else? Uh, I have one question. Steve, why don't we leave it with the gift card presentation? Is that just something we're going to kind of think about? Sure. So uh, it's funny, I actually had a meeting today uh, about it. So at the last board meeting, uh, the board had felt that. Overall, the program made sense uh, for both a gift card and an online sales platform, which is what the vendor Beyond Main offers. Uh, but my uh, my marching orders were to go and bring it to the advisory committee, which is made up of all business owners. So uh, we had a meeting right uh, about a week after uh, our board meeting. Some folks brought up uh, some operational questions as well as just phasing um, what types of businesses could really benefit from different parts of the service. Um, I think those are all very helpful questions. And we had a meeting today uh, with a couple of members from the advisory committee as well as Beyond Maine. Um, and so I plan in January to bring you guys a proposal um, as to what we could potentially do, at least for a, a phase one, uh, which would be focused specifically on retail businesses. Um, we could use that potentially as a pilot. Um, there are services specific to restaurants as well as professional services. Um, and so there's a couple of things that I want to work through with the vendor to make sure that it does give us uh, the highest uh, performance. But I, I think in January, I'm going to be able to bring back a proposal to you guys. Okay. Yeah, so it's moving well. Oh, just a question. I, you also were going to talk with some of the other communities that are using the program. So I did. I just want to make sure we can do that. Yes, yeah, so I, I did speak to some of my other uh colleagues. Uh, Montclair is very pleased with uh, the Beyond Main platform that they have. Um, I spoke to Summit as well. They have a little bit of a different program. What they do is that the SID office actually produces, manages, and mails out gift cards, uh, physical cards, which they also do in Cranford. Um, and so there's 
Cranford does not use Beyond Main. Summit uses Beyond Main for one part, but not the gift card part. And then Montclair uses Beyond Main for everything. So um, I spoke to those three folks, spoke to Cranford as to why they chose not to go with Beyond Main as well. Um, and I think overall, the real trap here is when you get into the management of the cards themselves. We would not entertain that. Everything would be online. It would essentially be a digital wallet. So you would go online, purchase a gift card for any denomination. And then once that gift card is exhausted, you would then purchase another gift card with a unique code. Um, I also think that the Beyond Main platform is the easiest operationally for point of sale um, compared to some things we've seen like with EFD, for example, which we've been through. So um, happy to bring that vendor in again, if you'd like to have a, a demo. Um, but I think we're very close, but it is a complex process and there's been a lot of failures throughout the state. And I wanna make sure that I'm being diligent about how we go about this. I, I don't want to make a rash decision, but I do think we're very close with this particular vendor. Is there any test period or is there, I mean, what, I mean, once we go in, we're in, right? There's no kind of, uh, there's no like test period. So there's, there's a one year uh, membership that uh, each business would have. So they would have a one year test period. Um, it's $600 a year. Um, we had discussed covering half that cost um, as an incentive for business to sign on. My goal would be to get somewhere between 40 and 50 businesses so that we have a critical mass that makes sense. Um, some towns that have not been successful have only gotten five, 10 businesses on board. That's not enough to drive excitement. So something that I'm also thinking about is potentially going out and soliciting businesses and asking them, if we provided $300 towards the $600 expense, would you sign on? And if we have 40 or 50 businesses that sign on, um, then, then perhaps we contract. Um, and so, again, I don't want to rush into it. I want to make sure that I'm understanding everything. Um, but I think, I, I think there's an argument to be made as to why this is valuable for Milburn. There's also the online shopping platform that makes a lot of sense. But um, I think we just need to be very careful about how we do this in a way that doesn't, um, doesn't jump too far ahead of ourselves. I just have a, a housekeeping question. The the you purchase the gift card. Who actually owns that gift card? If you know what I mean, like the, the, the person that is so so the big one literally in the word right gift. We talked about this this morning because um, Alex Zaltzman had asked this question. Obviously, he's got a, a pretty nice background in in tech, tech and finance, yeah. and he yeah. asked that same question. They said, well, about eighty percent of their business is gifting. Right, so it's Jackie Lieberberg buying a Hanukkah present for Stephen Weiner, and you give him $100 worth of credits, essentially, right, in that can be used within the boundaries of the bid. One of the issues that we faced with other gift cards was that we couldn't limit the geography. This one, only we can limit it to only businesses that are within the city. And so you would give him $100 to use. Now, if he goes into, you know, uh, if he goes into Oscar's Deli and buys $100 worth of sandwiches, it's done, it's gone. Just like any other gift card that you would have with a visa or something like that. Um, so it doesn't, it doesn't have some of the long-term, uh, I guess, obligations that we saw with things like Gifty. Does that answer your question? So- uh, I was doing a good job of getting us out of here at 7.30, okay. by the way. All right, I can- No, 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 no. I'm joking. I'm joking. No, there's a lot of questions I have. I have, well. I have a, yeah. you know what, I, I'm gonna, do uh write them down and then we're gonna we can review yeah. them yeah you know. could probably have its own separate separate yes because, because i think i mean i have no problem i think the january agenda is probably going to be fairly light just because we're going to be in the planning stages for spring um if you would like i can bring the consultant back in and you can ask these technical questions i think today we went a long way in our meeting to isolating where we want to be in year one if we went ahead kind of cut out some of the other details um, so if you wanted to have a year one conversation about some of those aspects, I'd be happy to schedule them to come in. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Great idea. Um, I think we have to go initial. Down. Yeah. Go slowly. I like the idea of surveying businesses to see who in reality is interested in this because they're, that's, they're going to ask a lot of questions, uh, before they say yes or no, I think, you know, um, the, the pilot, so we should be able to negotiate a more limited pilot. I don't like being committed to a one year, you're in it, you have to pay the full amount. I'm confident that they, well, 
they should agree to, I don't know, we can come up with some reasonable, you know, six months, lower cost. Let's just see how this thing works and see who buys these gifts. I, I don't know. So I, I'm... Yeah. And I also, I, and I also think because we're a premier community, you know, uh, that we that we are, that we have such a great community that um, that that we should have a short list of things that, that we want, you know, from them. You know, could be more could be more training, uh, you know, for our merchants. You know, why can't they do invest in our community a little bit you know, to show good faith? Yeah, that's a good question that you brought up. I did ask them specifically how the training goes. Um, and so let's just say 25 businesses signed off. Yeah. They would offer both in-person and online training right. for those businesses. And then if a business felt like they didn't have an understanding, they would then come in and offer one-on-one -on -one training on how to upload to, uh, your sales platform to, you, to their website or you know, how, how to utilize the, the point of sale for the gift cards um, because everybody uses a different one. Um, and so I thought that was great that they're willing to at work no with these cost, right? at no cost. Yeah, yeah. be included yeah. in the $600. So in your Oscar example, Oscars, I go in and buy, would Oscars have to have joined and pay the $600 yes. or whatever Correct. in order to receive these credits, right? Yes. So, yeah. okay. Yeah. So, and then you said, and then further the question, if it's $80 and there's $20 left on the card, Right, mm -hmm. and credits or credit, so you could go use that at another merchant. Correct. Um, yeah, because there's a digital wallet, right? And so if you spend eighty at Oscars, and then you walk next door, right, at Kai Judica, and you spend the remaining twenty, right. the digital wallet will update as you go. Yeah. yeah. And so it's I, in real time. Yeah, yes. I mean, I'm I'm thinking also the potential negative reaction to stores who choose not to participate. So, like, how do you inform consumers who are walking down the street which store to stop in to buy pizza, who's in and who's out, and then they get frustrated because you know, oh, they I want the pizza and they want to use it. And yeah, I thought you were in. So I think I think there's a plus and minus to that, right? That's absolutely the case, and we talked about that with Yifty originally. You know, yeah. if you've got 300 retailers in this town and only 30 of them are using the program. Right. Well, what if you walk in, you buy $200 worth of nice stuff and you go up expecting to use your card and then you can't. I mean, that's a bad look for everybody, right? Um, on the other hand, you could say, well, if we really want to dedicate ourselves to using this as a supplemental marketing tool, and we're saying it's going to cost you $300 to get this marketing tool. Well, that's a great way to then promote your business because you're part of this community that is offering this gift card. Right. And so you get to, so, so there's, yeah. I, I, if, if it generates new business for the business, right. Yeah. Otherwise those people would have come in and ordered a pizza anyway. So, yeah. so I asked them today, I said, um, here's a good example. Every day at three o'clock, when you look out that window, it is a zoo, right? There are hundreds of high school students who come down. Now, the majority of what they spend on, right. I said, what if, what if somebody gave their kid a gift card, you know, every month and said, here's a hundred bucks, go have fun after school. They go buy a slice of La Strada, a coffee at Dunkin' and an ice cream over at haagen -Dazs. And they said, well, that's not really the model because they would have spent that money in. All you're doing is just, instead of paying with cash or credit card, paying with a gift card. They said, what you really want to do is enroll people who are a bit of a higher end type of retailer, right? So a boutique, for instance, or um, paper ribbon and wrap or the bookstore, right? Someone that, you know, the average customer is not going to go in and just hand five bucks over and, and purchase something. It's more about driving people to a particular destination because they've been made aware through this marketing that that destination exists. Um, and that's not, that's not without fail, right? That can, in theory, that works. Does it work in practicality? I'm not sure. Um, but that's the other reason that I've never been you know, 100% towards a gift card. I, I really want to make sure that if we invest money in that and time, that we're doing it in a way that makes sense for this community. Because yeah. there's many, many other things we can spend money on. Right. Yeah. I just want to make sure that if we do, we I, do I it totally right. agree, because it's time, not, I mean, the money is there, of course, but it's time. Uh, and sweat and, equity. And, 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 and lost opportunity. Yes. Like we could have done some other terrific That's program uh, for the year. I'm obviously somewhat skeptical, but also before the January meeting, maybe ask them to share the all the agreements that we, we would ask the stores to sign. So what does it really mean if they say, okay, Splurge Bakery is in for a 600 or 300, whatever it's going to be. 
Um, what what do they expect the stores to execute? Because I'd like to read those. Because yeah. yeah. that's some of the details we got hung up on last time. Yeah. And I've yeah. put the businesses in a tough spot. And, and further to their presentation, I also think we should look carefully. We should look carefully at the reviews. Remember, we were talking about how they do reviews. Mm -hmm. I think that um, as we go forward, as the, at least I find in my businesses, reviews are so critical to businesses, both positive and negative. I think that we really have to look at, at their, their current policy when we go into this. Because small businesses depend on reviews. Bad reviews can hurt, can hurt businesses. Good reviews could really help. I think that that is something that we have to really look carefully at before we sign on. Yeah, I, I completely agree. I think um, gift cards and these types of online sales platforms have, I think, average success across New Jersey. It really is whether it's the right town, right? It's not the right fit for every town and you don't want to force it. And so I'm willing to be in a situation where I say, good concept, not for Milburn. Or good concept works for us, fine. I'm not married to one either way. Um, on the other hand, you know, I, I do think um, we, we just need to make sure that, uh, I, I think Beyond Maine is the best option for us based on their reputation of functionality. Um, but the best option is not always the final option. We may walk away and just say, let's yeah. shelve this one for yeah. another year. We're not ready or we have other things we'd like to spend money on. So, you know, my job is to bring you choices and information. I think we're, we've had a lot of conversations about this. And so, um, if, you know, at our January meeting, we, we feel like we're able to make a final decision. I think that would be good for everybody involved. At least it gives us some clarity. Thank you, Steve. Well, good night. All right, how about a motion to adjourn? <laughs> I'm not allowed to make one. Motion. He was looking at me. Second. <laughs> and we want to have a happy, safe holiday. Safe. And you too, Mr. Same too. And you too.